So I've gone on to Randy Oliver's site, scientificbeekeeping.com. This man has done absolutely fabulous research to help bees and beekeepers. It is all funded by beekeepers. He doesn't take money or uh, product from uh, any of the, the companies that are making them. So uh, all of us probably should send him some money if we have the ability to do it. Uh, he's been doing a lot of research on extended release oxalic acid for mite control. So it's having good results and he's given a report on his findings even though they're not done yet um, because the beekeepers are the ones that are paying for this and he believes he owes that to the bee uh, beekeepers that have paid him to do the research so although what I'm doing here tonight is not uh, labeled it's having good results. Uh, Randy Oliver has a permit to do it. So does Cayman Reynolds. Um, I'm just going to bootleg it. So it won't be the most illegal thing I've ever done. But at least I'm not running shine, huh, John? So these are the sponges that we're going to put it on there. Sweetie sponge. I'm cutting them into strips. Uh, so that I can pour the oxalic acid on them when it's done. It's vegetable glycerin and wood bleach equal parts one to one by weight. So 10 pounds of oxalic acid and almost a gallon of vegetable glycerin. We have to heat it to get it to go in the solution. And we don't want to heat it over 170 degrees. At 179, there's a chemical reaction that takes place. And nobody is sure, nobody, Randy Oliver doesn't know how much, if at all, that affects things. But there's a reaction. So if you keep it below 170, uh, you can get it to go in solution. I've got the candy thermometer on here and we're just barely over 100 right now and it's really starting to slip into solution. So, once that's uh, clear, and we know it's in solution, I will then pour it on top of these sponges and let them set overnight. At what time the oxalic gas will crystallize on the sponges and become drier. The people that have done it uh, at a lower rate um, they end up with a really sticky sponge so says Randy and uh, it's harder to move around and, and do things with and he said when when you put this sponge in it, it's drier it's easier to handle and then the moisture in the hive uh, reactivates the oxalic acid and then they pick it up as they track through it um, I'm gonna try this versus the tactic that we've been using uh, every time I use it and Apivar which is I believe the same chemical um, it, you lose bees it's hard on bees so uh, this is supposed to be easier on them again uh, Randy said that if you use it in the the wetter form that it's hard on brood and and the bees get agitated but if you do it at this level it doesn't um, so I'm cutting the strips in thirds and I'm gonna pour it on it. Um, so that's my outlaw for tonight. And then I'm gonna try to make some dinner. All right, if you guys have any questions on this, uh, throw them in the comments. I'll try to clear them up. They're all on, all the answers are on Randy's site and Hopefully this is going to be the new catch me out for the mites because uh, this is really low in toxicity and supposed to do the wonder to them. So anyhow, we'll give her a shot and see what it does. 
Well, it went into solution at about 145, 150 degrees. Um, so you just have to be keeping an eye on it. You don't have to get it up close to 170 to get it into solution. So now I'm going to attempt to pour it on the towels. And I figure I got way more than I need here. So I got some, uh, some shop towels. Two because I don't have enough of the sponges to do all the flipping colonies that I now own. And I wanted to throw some in my buddy's stuff too. Um, so we can see how they do for him. So you want to pour it on hot. I said that earlier. And then it should crystallize in the splashing all over. Probably don't need to do as big a pot of it as I did, but you know, you know how I roll, go big or go home, right? I thought about doing half of it, and I thought, well, what am I going to do with the other half? So, it, uh, looks like I'm going to have to put some of it into jugs or something. Because I got way more than I need. But. We'll get her poured in here and soaked into this stuff. And then at least I can treat things if I need to. And uh, it actually is quite heavy. 10 pounds of oxalic acid and 10 pounds of glycerin. Makes a big pot. No, I know I got way more than I'm supposed to in here, so we'll uh, maybe stop there and see how it turns out. I believe we're just supposed to have saturated them and soaked them full, but. This is a little more than that. They're floating in it. Anyway, we'll see what they do by morning and then we'll take them out. So this is next morning. The stuff congealed. Um, but yet, if you touch it, move it, warm it almost at all, uh, it goes back to a liquid. Um, but kind of gelatinous. So, I pull these up out of here. They're not drippy wet by any means, and I believe we'll dry uh, a little more. Uh, and I, I think that's the way we want them to go into the hive. is stiff and fairly dry. And then when the bees warm it up uh, with their heat and their walk across it, it will... Uh, release the oxalic acid again here's what's left in the pot and it's just kind of slimy so we'll uh, get it contained in something because I'm sure we can use it 